Maddie Conrad, Brad Pitt, scene one, take one. That's the first time I've heard my name and Brad Pitt together. That is the closest I have come to Brad Pitt. What's up GQ? This is Fine Points. My name is Matty Conrad. I'm a men's grooming expert and today we are going to go over the career evolution of Brad Pitt and some of his most iconic hairstyles. I've been working behind a chair in a barber shop now for over 27 years and I can say with authority that the most common photograph that I see behind a chair in a barber shop is of Brad Pitt. He's always had a fairly dynamic style. He's gone with a lot of different looks. Whether it's growing his hair out really long for a film like Legends of the Fall or interviews of the vampire, or cutting his hair incredibly short for movies like Ocean's Eleven, Brad's always managed to pick exactly the right look for his characters. So let's start back where mostly it began for Brad in the 90s. Now, we were coming out of a period in the 1980s where everything was heavily inspired by a SoCal surf and skate vibe. And if you look at the pictures of Brad in the early 90s, you can really see the influence that he had for that. Very, very tapered out and built out on the sides. So instead of having these really shaved undercuts, things are looking a little fuller, a little wider. And this is really the embodiment of that shape. The look that he created for his character in A River Runs Through It was very much a classic look, but something that became very, very popular in the 90s. It was sort of a bowlish shape with very tight, clean sides. You could look at other shows that were popular at the time, like Boy Meets World or like Home Improvement, and you would see some of the other celebrities this time, the younger guys, this youthful look, where they've got this bowlish kind of shape. Now, this looks really good on Brad. He can wear this style, and this was the first movie role where he really got noticed as the potential for a leading man. This is really him breaking into that aspect of the industry and he keeps this very youthful kind of look. As that leading man persona starts to take hold for Brad and as we move a little further into the 90s, the influence of grunge music starts to take off. And you can see into the 90s as he kind of starts to grow out a beard for the first time, his hair gets a little longer, has a little bit more of that Kurt Cobain influence when he's starting to do the tuck back and just the longer mop of hair. The role that he was growing his hair out for was the movie California where he plays a little bit more of a darker side. So being able to embrace that with his look, I think he leaned into more of that kind of grunge feeling to his hair. Now, post the movie California, Brad continued to grow his hair out, and the longer hair was something that became synonymous with his look, especially when he aced movies like Legends of the Fall. Legends of the Fall, he played a very iconic character named Tristan, who has become kind of redefined as that long-haired, romantic, leading man. He gave it a very pretty, attractive look, instead of having to make it look like somebody that had given up on their looks. Continuing with the long hair, he then produces an excellent performance as essentially a 500-year-old immortal French vampire in Interview with a Vampire. This is another way in which he is able to use his look and use the length of his hair to help embody that role. It's a very transformative thing for a lot of actors. And even still outside of the scope of acting and offset, they still have a tendency to embody those vibes. And you can see into the mid 90s, Brad had a little bit more of that kind of undead look. You know, he had that longer hair and he went in and bleached it out, changed out the color of it and still really embraced that kind of grunge feel. You can see Brad is also embracing kind of that loose baggy sweater look. And so it was very, very on point and was something that was talked about a lot in magazines. You would see him at a lot of different events with this and people were just going crazy for it. Then came a big transformation. Now we're in 1995 and Brad is booked in the movie Seven, a role for which he completely changed his look by cutting his hair very, very short. At that point, this kind of rough and textured look called bedhead became very mainstream. It was heavily influenced by punk from the 1970s and early 1980s, and it was sought as kind of a slightly more aggressive look. A lot of guys would come in with this picture from the movie. It really kicked off the idea of these kind of bleached out or frosted tips that a lot of guys were asking for with this really rough texture. Now, let's just take a pause here for a second because I think something needs to be brought up. Along his career, it's not totally uncommon for Brad Pitt to adopt a shockingly similar style to whoever he's dating. Let's look into 1997, where he started dating Gwyneth Paltrow. Her very iconic hairstyle looked very similar to his when he was dating Jennifer Aniston and she had those weird twisty dread things. Even when uh, the Rachel haircut for Jennifer Aniston became completely iconic, his was not trailing too far behind. 
In the late 90s came possibly one of his most iconic looks. Now, Fight Club was an exaggeration of the shorter style that he was wearing before, that idea of bedhead and that influence of punk. But instead of keeping things short and contained, they were let a little bit loose. And this really suited his Tyler Durden character. This style was particularly popular with a lot of younger guys that would come and wanted that little rougher, that little more lived in kind of style. This is at the point too where men's hairstyling products started to diversify so that they could create create these really specific types of textures. You weren't just using mousse and gel anymore. Suddenly there was pastes and putties and pomades and all these different products because of the specificity of how rough and how interesting these styles looked. In 2001, one of Brad Pitt's most notable performances was probably in Ocean's Eleven, where he had a little bit more of a clean cut look for his character of Rusty, who played a bit of a con man. This look for him really, really suits, uh, especially the short kind of blonde frosted out tips. The period for frosted tips usually happened between about the kind of early 90s until about the early 2000s, when they almost entirely disappeared and guys stopped coloring their hair altogether largely because to that point, we had frosted the tips of every man on earth. Sometimes at this point, guys like to change their looks up too. I know that Brad at one point had made a comment in an interview that he was tired of just feeling like the Hollywood pretty boy. And I think that's probably why he started growing a beard. So this is a little bit tail end for that, but you can still see that Brad is rocking a very short style. If I'm being perfectly honest, these are not my favorite shapes on Brad. The reason for that being is because he has what we call kind of a traditionally handsome face shape. It's rectangular, it's square. And that's always a really complimentary thing. Other square face shapes that are considered kind of classic Hollywood handsome are guys like James Cagney or even Leonardo DiCaprio. So these guys have this kind of look that is really complimented by square shapes. And as soon as the hair is shaved very, very short because of the shape of the head on top, they all tend to look just a little bit round. As much as it really does suit his personality because he is a really carefree, laid back kind of guy, I really don't think a beard is Brad's best look. Into the early 2000s, you can see that once again, Brad is growing his hair out longer. I can only surmise that this is for his role in the movie Troy, in which he used partially his own hair and partially some prosthetic hair from the makeup department. But this is something that I think is, is just comfortable for Brad. I think he does genuinely gravitate towards slightly longer looks. And it's a bit of a fountain of youth for him. And I think we can get into that in a minute. 2007 is the first time he steps out with Angelina Jolie on a red carpet and the two of them just ooze that classic Hollywood charm. It's really interesting also to note that in 2007 was the advent of the show Mad Men, which became a cultural icon of its own. The references that they made to the cool slick styles of the early 1960s permeated fashion and a lot of guys were trying to pull their best Don Draper, slick with a side part. And this is a look that Brad pulls off perfectly. It is absolutely made for his face shape because these classic looking hairstyles have a little bit more of a square construction and are incredibly flattering to a square jaw. So this for me is probably one of my favorites. And at the time there was kind of Ashton Kutcher, surfy, SoCal, moppy kind of hairstyle versus the Don Draper kind of hipster old school set where a lot of guys were going for that really old vintage look just like grandpa used to wear. This was starting to take over. So Brad Pitt started off in 2007 like that, but you can see in 2008, the following year, he made a little bit of nod to the Biebs. This little side swept bang in this moppy bullish top. Going back to a more modern military film for Brad Pitt meant having shorter, more military spec hair. So when he filmed in Glorious Bastards in 2009, you can really see the influence of that 1940s era where everybody's hair was kept very nice and short and clean. You can also see the influence in his facial hair. At the time in the 1940s, a finely groomed mustache would have been considered something of clean kind of upper class society. But wearing it past filming was a bold choice because most people didn't consider mustaches in fashion at that point. Something that has changed in just the last few years where mustaches have now become very cool. Even to this day, I still see people coming in with pictures of Brad Pitt from this role as their mustache influence. I think the thing I like about this look is that it still goes back to that that old Hollywood vibe. It is very dapper leading man and it's really complimentary to his face shape and his general persona. The 1950s was all about rock and roll. Guys like Elvis Presley, Johnny Cash, Jerry Lee Lewis. They all started growing their hair out longer into a style called the pompadour, which is what Brad has in this photo. 
I think it's fascinating that coming out of a World War II movie, Brad followed the exact same path as a lot of the ex-GIs did coming out of World War II, where they're growing their hair longer and into a more rock and roll savvy style. As the hair grows a little bit longer too, Brad starts to express himself through facial hair. Goatees are usually for guys that are trying to elongate their face shape. So when you take somebody with a square face shape or a square jawline, add a goatee to it to elongate it even more, it becomes less flattering the longer it gets. I'm not gonna call Brad out for growing his facial hair. I mean, let the guy do what he wants. How many times does this guy have to win sexiest man alive for us to just give him a hall pass on one thing? You can see now heading closer into the 20 teens that the hair is getting longer again. He did something that was very popular called ombre, and it's meant to have a very seamless kind of sun-kissed kind of look to the hair rather than some of the more bolder color statements he was making in the 90s. This was a lot more subtle and a lot more natural, and if you ask me, just looks a lot more mature, even though I think that his long hair gives him a certain kind of fountain of youth quality here. And I think that's what he really likes about the long hair, is it keeps him very young and very casual feeling. Once again, after a period of growing out a little bit of comfort, Brad changes his hair drastically for a role as a tank commander in the movie Fury. This took what was already a simmering style trend of these old school classic haircuts and it poured gasoline on it. As soon as everybody saw this movie or even just saw the movie poster, guys were flooding into barber shops asking for this hairstyle. It probably helped that also similar to his style as seen in the show Peaky Blinders. And so when it comes to a movie role like this for Brad Pitt, being able to commit to that authenticity of those looks was really great because even though it inspired all of these beautiful fades and really clean, classic, backward flowing haircuts, the haircut itself looked like it had been done with a pair of hand clippers in the back of a tank in World War II. He just went with what was authentic and I really admire that about it. It was absolutely a huge, huge fashion trend and Fury is probably gonna go down as one of his most iconic roles. In 2019, the film Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was a story of the golden age of Hollywood in 1969. So of course, Brad got to grow his hair back out for a very fitting role as a stuntman in that film, and it was absolutely perfectly on point. This is, in fact, transitioning away from that Mad Men era into more of that 70s grown out kind of longer shapes that a lot of guys were wearing. So he really, again, hit a completely authentic look with this one, but I think it also came a little bit more in line with how he feels most comfortable. This guy just can't lose. He looks amazing with long hair. He looks amazing with short hair, and as soon as you put him in a tuxedo on a runway or somewhere in a red carpet for an award show, everybody's just flooding in asking for these shapes. What I really like about him though is he's his own man. He's always doing his own thing. Even with those slight dalliances and those tiny little like influences from like Don Draper or even Justin Bieber, you know, you, you still get to see Brad through it all. His personality really shines through all those looks and his, there is a bit of a consistency to his vibe even though the hairstyles are drastically different. There just is a comfort to it, you know? And to me, that's a guy that looks entirely comfortable in his own skin. Well, if you made it this far in the video, you clearly like Brad Pitt as much as I do. But if there's anyone else that you think we should take a deep dive into, write them in the comments below. Maybe I'll have a look.